God has been faithful, would you throw both of your hands in the air? And would you give him the praise he's worthy of right now? Come on, everybody in this house. Would you give him the praise that he's worthy of right now? Because all of your life, he's been faithful. All of your life, he's been so good. Your story couldn't have taken a whole different twist. But God's not coming up. God has been faithful. Come on, let's give him the praise he's worthy of right now. Everybody in this place. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so Goodness of God. I think we ought to cut loose and worship like we ought to right now. There ought to be some fervent worship. Instead of just some small semblance of praise, there ought to be some fervent worship. Our stories could have been different. You could, it could be that you never heard the gospel. It could be that you had never felt his presence. It could be that he never healed you one time. Oh, yes. Oh, yes.
are some wonderful things that technology has afforded us. Those that are try to be extra cautious when you're traveling the streets. Many people have downloaded apps like it's called Waze and what's the name of it, Destiny? Way Waze, and it, it, it'll 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 pull up the map to where you're going and it. Some of you have used it. It'll, it'll show you where crashes are. It'll tell you how many vehicles are involved in the crash. It'll, <clears throat> or it'll tell you where construction is at and how long extra it's going to take you to get to where you're supposed to be going because of the construction. And the real good ones will even tell you where the cops are at so you can get back to legal <laughs> before, you, before, before you get there. It just shows you what you can avoid. I wish it weren't true, but the atlas of our individual lives has often been spotted with the construction signs or the wrecks that involve more than just our vehicle. And how much longer it may take us to get to where we were going. We've often looked at the atlas of life and said, and there's so many construction signs, so many wrecks. Will I ever get to where I'm going? But the good news is, before you got there, grace was there to greet you. Before you entered a construction zone, there was grace for the construction. Before you had the mishap, he was on lake location. Say, so, well, I, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like God forgot about me. You're still here. You're still enjoying the blessings and the life of God. Because his goodness is running after you. I'm glad he don't give up easy. Glad he don't give up easy. Ushers, would you come? Thank you for your faithfulness today. Thank you for your faithfulness in giving. Our missionary was here Tuesday night. I'll give you a little praise report. At the end of service, you could tell that I was feeling a little something about getting enough money to build a church for them because it only takes $10,000 for them to build a church. A whole church. Almost this size. It's just cinder block walls and a roof and doors and windows. They do all the work. Materials is about $10,000. They don't have any air conditioning. don't have electricity. They don't need that. They have church in the light. Right. <clears throat> because they're not Western culture, they don't need all the disco balls and all the fog machines, so they don't need electricity. They just depend on the glory of the Lord to move into place. And so <clears throat> I've already had 3,000 committed to that. And I said that it's very, I even said that night it's possible God would give somebody a promotion or a raise or a bonus. If they, there's an individual in our church that got a very significant, that wanted to give to that, got a very significant bonus this week. Awesome. So they're saying, hey, we're going we're gonna to get this church built. I didn't make a push. It's just people uh, people wanting to bless. Uh, some of us not clapping. People just wanting to bless the kingdom. It's kingdom minded. Pastor, we need that for our building. I think if we sow in somebody else's field, I'm going to get to stand beside those sheaves also and say we had a part in somebody being saved in Guyana. Amen. So thank you for your faithfulness. And uh, Tuesday night will be, we go back to our Captured Heart series. Thursday night is prayer. Friday and Saturday our students are having their uh, sun, summer youth function, and they know all about that. If you don't know all the details, please uh, call or text Dawson or Amber. And uh, it is Move the Missions. Some of us uh, still are not familiar with that term. In our old days, it was She's for Christ. And your old sister Gwen this morning said, we used to march 20 miles to raise money 
for she's for Christ. Thank God we grew up since then. Those 20 mile walks would be brutal right now. But uh, it's move the mission season instead of she's for Christ. And so the last Sunday of next month we'll be taking up a move the mission offering. And that helps to put money in the hands of missionaries to buy literally washers and dryers and buy vehicles for them to be able to get to where they need to go to, to preach the gospel where they couldn't go without. So just reminding you of that, putting it on your radar so that we can all start praying and fasting about what God would be interested in us in us doing. Uh, I'm, I'm taking just a minute today, and I normally don't, but, but that's all right. And uh, I, I won't ever forget, I was a five-year-old kid, and uh, <clears throat> we had moved to Jackson, Mississippi, out of the will of God. And... Uh, Brother Ewan had told my dad he didn't feel good about it. Well, my dad said, well, I'm going anyway. <laughs> well, when for four, four or five weeks, we had nothing to eat but lima beans and bread. Literally. Dad learned a little lesson. It's real quiet in the house right now. But it's good. We, we, we had very little more than that to eat because money was that bad. And we were four hours, five hours from civilization like like charles and uh <laughs> so my grandfather had to rent a u-haul and come pick us up and move us back and a man with two kids and a wife got the his ego stroked by having to move in with his in-laws <laughs> with no job and no money and it was she's for christ season so Brother Ewan said, we're going to fast and pray about what God would have us to give to She's for Christ. So my dad said, you know what? I done learned one lesson the hard way. I'm fixing to, I'm fixing to try to do this just a little bit better. <clears throat> he looks dumb. He's not. And he's not even here to defend himself this morning. He had to leave after the first service. And uh, <clears throat> so he started praying and fasting, him and my mother. And God told him to give $1,000. He didn't even have a job. Lord said, if you give it, just watch me work. So the night that we took up pledges at church, he stood and said, I'm going to give a thousand. Brother, you just started crying because he knew our condition. <clears throat> the next day, he got a phone call from a place that he had made an application at and started that week making more money than he had ever made wow. on a route selling life insurance, doing better than he ever did. And within just a few weeks, we had our own house to move into and got a loan that we shouldn't have got because of no money. And it all went back to that one night when we listened to the Holy Ghost. All my life, you have been faithful. All my life, you have been so good. Amen. So thank you for your faithfulness, and we're glad all of you are here today. And if you're watching online, we're so honored that you're watching today. We're fixing to give unto the Lord, but before we do start the offering, we're preparing. We're honored to have Brother Greg Albritton today. He is a. I, I've already told him it's been way too long since he's been here, and that's not his fault; it's mine. I, uh, he and I have been friends for a long time, and I can say today, and I hope I don't say anything amiss. I've never known anybody stronger than Greg Albright. He has suffered some of the worst calamities in life. And not only still has his faith, he's still greatly anointed of God and faithful. God has been good to Greg Albright. And uh, uh, we're, we're honored to have him today. When I... When I Took this church in 99. The very next year I got voted in to be sectional youth director and had the high honor of serving under him. He was our district youth president. And uh, he, he, was, he was a servant of servants and greatly anointed. And uh, I was very honored and privileged to work with him. 
And uh, we're very happy he's here today. And he is going to bring a great word. He's already blessed our ministry team this morning with a word and uh, in class. And he's going to bless us today. Amen. So we're glad that we're all bringing us here. Can you say amen? Amen. Let's give unto the Lord today. Bless his kingdom while they prepare to sing. And uh, let's believe God to do something great. Father, I want to thank you for your goodness. We feel your presence today. Your presence is absolutely phenomenal. I don't know what all you're going to do, but I feel you up to something. I'm asking you to, huh? As your people give today, bless your people. We obey your word and tithes and offerings. Pour out blessings we cannot contain. Because we're going to bless you again with it. In Jesus' name. Come worshiping with a cheerful heart.
Hallelujah, Lord, we love you. We yield to that sweet presence that's in this room right now. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah, we worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, dear Jesus. Hallelujah, there's a depth and a sweetness in this room right now. Let's just pause for a moment and worship him. We love you, Jesus. We lift you, Jesus. We magnify you, Jesus. Let that oil flow in every pew. Let it flow in every family unit. Let it flow in every home represented in this building, Lord Jesus. Let oil flow from the heavens, Jesus. Let there be a release, a virtue release of your strength and your power. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. I just want us to do something right now. There's such a sweetness of God's presence. We talked with the ministry leaders this morning about how when you touch something that's touching Jesus, he can flow through that. Yes, sir. The lady in the Bible touched his garment, but Jesus said, who touched me? Because his power flowed through that garment and touched her. She physically touched the garment, but she got Jesus because she touched something that was touching Jesus. And there's examples of that throughout the word of the Lord, but when I was walking to the pulpit, I just felt... The Lord impressed me before we move further. Let's just let him flow through us to connect and minister to others. So if you don't, if you don't mind for a moment, if, if you're a guest or a friend and you're not comfortable, just that that's perfectly fine. But if it's where you can take the hand of that neighbor or family member or friend beside you, or if you want to put your hand on their shoulder, if you take their hand, would you mind just lifting that hands to the heaven, hand to the heavens right now? You're connecting right now for the purpose. His oil's flowing in the sanctuary right now. There's people can get what they need from heaven in this moment right now. There's people that can need, get what they need from the throne room in this very moment right now. You're connecting to somebody that's connecting to Jesus and his oil will flow. His virtue will flow. His grace, his strength. I believe somebody can be healed right now while you're holding their hand, praying that Jesus touches them. Amen. That renewing they're praying for can come on them. That oil that they're seeking for in their family can flow straight to their vessel right now. In Jesus' holy name. In Jesus' holy name. In Jesus' holy name. You may be holding hands with somebody that has a need. Say, Jesus, just let your power flow right now. Let your grace flow right now. There may be somebody that just needs grace. Amen. They may have fallen flat on their face this week. But grace will flow right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. God, we give you praise and give you glory. Let's give our Jesus a standing ovation. It's been all about you. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's great to be with you all this morning from the first words of the first session through the worship service. You just feel like, I love coming into an atmosphere where you feel like it's all about him. It's all for him. We're honoring and lifting him up. I learned a long time ago, you can't out love Jesus, but when you give yours his way, it, come, oh, it comes back. It comes back. So I need everybody to do me a favor. Say happy birthday, Brother Greg. Happy All right. I, I know I don't look 57. Well, uh, hopefully if I don't, that is the other direction. Not. But it's an honor to be with you. I, I'm a, I got some issues if I'm 25. I'm going to go ahead and tell you that. I don't, I don't mind backing me down a little bit, but 
got a little, little water under the bridge. But it's great to be with you all on this day. And uh, I give honor to Pastor and Sister Whitaker, wonderful, wonderful leaders, apostolic leaders. Thank God for them. When I was uh, with the ministry team in the first session, we were in a room right here to the side, and we heard Pastor getting that, 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 uh, that Holy Ghost juice coming on him while he was teaching. And I just made a comment. I said, I said, when I was here before, Pastor taught and I preached, and I remember just, he's one of our most gifted, anointed, teacher preachers, very, very, very much a gift, and to a person in this room, that in that room, they about jumped out of their seat saying, we feel the same way, and, and I give you honor, I heard Brother Billy Cole one time say in the last days, one of the most powerful channels would be what he called apostolic teaching, and, and I believe that that gift is on you, and I honor you, and thank you for all the kind words you said about me earlier. We did have some good times back in the day. Uh, she's for Christ and, and youth, youth camps and, and youth ministry. And I look fondly back on those days. And um, so I walked into Sister Whitaker singing. I would have to say it's in my top three of all-time favorite songs of all my life. You have been faithful. And that was amazing. Thank you. And yeah, Amen. <laughs> And then Destiny just tore it up in a good way on one of my other favorite songs. Both of them high on my prayer list. You know, I mean, you can look it up on my phone. They're, they're there and they're played all the time. And I did, see, I did notice something interesting when Destiny was singing. Uh, the man standing beside me was was right over there, and he said, come on, sing it, baby, sing it, baby. And I'm like, there, now there's only, only, only one person in this room or two maybe that can say, sing it, baby. If I start saying that, I'll get in trouble. <laughs> but wherever she's at, sing it, baby. <laughs> hey, Amen. Thank you. That was awesome. And uh, I, enjoyed, <laughs> I enjoyed that dad moment there. I'm like, here you go. You got to sing it, baby. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> hey, Amen. So great, great again, to be with you all, and, and I just, I want to say something, and if I felt it was absolutely a thousand percent prophetic from God, I would say it. This may just be some Greg Albritton in there, but it's true either way, but that's this. In this one service alone, I sensed your pastor having a passion, tears in his eyes, saying he felt something from the Lord that if we can get $10,000 together, we can build a church somewhere else. And then, and then a few moments later, talking about passionately giving to the kingdom of God through Move the Mission, She's for Christ, through the years. And I thought in 10 minutes, he spoke about, men, about blessing others elsewhere for the kingdom of God, letting finances go to bless others. And I'm standing there saying, God, if there's ever a church that I've been in that needs a few more parking spaces and a little bit more room, this Holy Ghost Jesus Church is about there. Amen. And so while you're having, I'm, I'm just believing in Jesus' name. I, I told, I feel the Holy Ghost. I, I told the group right over in this room a few minutes ago, you be a vessel and let things flow through you, and you watch what you let flow through you. Somehow God has a way of letting it come back to you. Amen. He has a way. So I, I just believe it in the Holy Ghost as you're having a passion and you're not making it all about you. You're not making it all about us, me. No, no. You're making it about his kingdom. But God sees that. And as you let it flow through you, God's going to circle it around right back to you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. The most organized parking lot I've ever been in. That was awesome. But Jesus, give us a few more spaces. Well, the Bible says you get what you ask for. I want a lot more spaces. Amen. 
I will say this. I, 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 I feel Jesus in that. So the story he told about his dad, it opens the channels. When you say, God, I'll, I'll be a vessel to let your blessing flow through me to others, it opens the channels of heaven. I'll say this just on a daddy note. This is a little, little side note, but I had to grin. At the beginning of church, I realized I was teaching next door, and I forgot to text and make sure my kids back home were up and at church at home. And, uh, and sometimes in the summer, heavy sleep can come on my teenagers and my nine-year-old. And so it, church was already started back at POA, so I text them. You know, 18-year-old, 17-year-old, and my 9-year-old boy. And I text them, and, and I, I was like, y'all at church? And after about two minutes, I got no response. So I just went to my go-to urgent action, and that's find my phone, that ding, ding, that's so annoying. And so I clicked it for both of them, find my phone, knowing that wherever they're at, if they're sleeping, they're going to start hearing ding, ding, ding. And then I got a text back, yes, we're in church. <laughs> So I might be in trouble when I get home, but it was funny. <laughs> do what you got to do. Let's turn to the word of the Lord, Isaiah chapter 51. I want to look at verse 7 and 8. Again, thank you for the honor of being with you all. And I love the, the Jesus apostolic atmosphere. Isaiah 51, verse 7 and 8. The writer says this, hearken unto me. The Lord speaking through the prophet, hearken unto me, ye that know righteousness, the people in whose heart is my law. Fear ye not the reproach of men, neither be ye afraid of their revilings. For the moth shall eat them up like a garment, the worm shall eat them like wool. He's saying the, those that do not serve the Lord, he, he, he's saying don't, don't worry. That's temporal. What you see, their success or what's happening is, is temporal. But notice what he says at the end about his righteousness. My righteousness shall be forever and my salvation from generation to generation. My righteousness shall be forever and my salvation from generation to generation. To generation. I want to minister for a few moments this morning on the subject from generation to generation. Would you say that with me? From generation to generation. God bless you. You may be seated. Now that phrase is something that we find, it's a phrase we find uh, scattered throughout the Word of God. Lamentations, chapter 5, verse 19. Bible says, Thou, O Lord, remainest forever, and thy throne from generation to generation. Daniel, chapter 4, verse 3. How great are thy signs, and how mighty are God's wonders, his kingdom. What you're plugging into today, it's not going to fade away. Amen. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. It doesn't have a two-term limit. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and his dominion is from generation to generation. Just from this small sampling of Scripture. We see that God's salvation, here's the words that were used, his salvation, his throne, and his dominion is to be from generation to gen generation. So I, 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 I'm here today just to encourage us and to help us remember and understand that God's promises, God's blessings, what God does, what he pours out, was never meant for just one generation. It was not meant for just one moment in time. It was not just meant for one revival series. Or uh -uh. When God's doing something, he's always saying, I'm doing it for you and 
for those coming. We find this over, it's, it's actually to me very profound in its simplicity, but profound in its repetitiveness throughout the word of God. That God's always saying, I'm doing what I'm doing for you now, and I am preparing for what's coming next. It's over and over in the word of God. The prophecy, the promise of the Holy Ghost being poured out. In the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 28. Got a good bit of scripture today. Amen. Just, just stay locked in with me in the word. Amen. I say it's a good bit of scripture. It's 10 or 15 verses we're going to reference. I quoted both of my children. We leave this Friday for Bible Quiz Nationals for Beginners and then drive across Missouri from Branson to St. Louis area for experience. And I've got kids in each division. So we quoted almost 700 verses of the Bible yesterday at my house before I left. So this is really not that many verses. But Joel chapter 2, look what it says in verse 28. This is the promise of the Holy Ghost being poured out. I mean, this is it. I'm going to pour out my spirit. Look what God interweaves in this promise, in this prophecy. It shall come to pass afterward. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. You think God would be like, I'm going to pour my spirit out. Listen at the very next phrase. Oh, and your sons and your daughters are going to prophesy. Your old men's going to be involved. They're going to dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions on your servants and handmaids. I will pour out my spirit. I'm pouring it out on you, but I'm pouring it out on your sons and on your daughters. He's telling them it's for the young men. It's for the handmaids. It's for the elders. Old men's going to be involved. All points in between. I'm not just doing this for you. I'm not just doing it for one generation. My Holy Ghost, my promises are to be from generation to generation. Amen. It's, it's for the children, too. Let's fast forward to the book of Acts, to the fulfillment of this prophecy. Joel prophesied, and it shall come to pass. Now I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh. Let's jump forward to the book of Acts, where God poured out his spirit. We finally refer to it as the day of Pentecost, Acts 2.37. When they heard this, they were stirred in their hearts, and they said, men and brethren, men of God, what, what are we supposed to do? Peter said unto them, repent. Here he is. It's the day of Pentecost. It's a long-awaited day that the promise has been poured out, and Peter says, here's what you're to do. Repent. Turn from anything that's not of God. Turn towards God. Be baptized, every one of you. That connects you to the burial of Jesus. Be baptized in the name of Jesus. This is for the remission of sins. All of your sins are washed away. And ye shall receive the Holy Ghost. He could have stopped right there, but he didn't. He said, for the promise is unto you. But I've got to take it further, he said. But the promise is unto you and to your children and to it's not just for right here it's not just for today it's for you it's for your children it's to those that's not even here today as many as the lord our god shall call Simon Peter was saying, what you see happening here today, it's going to work for your kids, and it's going to work for their kids. What God was doing on the day of Pentecost was meant to be shared and passed on and to happen from generation to generation. So it's very, very clear. God's promise, his promises are for now and for next. His promise is for me, but he's also for my children. But because this is stated and so clearly, this doesn't automatically mean that the younger generation will receive all that God has for them. It's not just an automatic, well, God said it's for them too, and so I guess it'll happen for them too. It, it does, the promises and the clear statements that are repeated does not relieve the elders and the older generation 
of any responsibility to share the good news and teach these principles. In fact, it's the opposite. It becomes, amen, a call from God on, on us that's been serving God for a while to say, it's not just about me. I've got to lead some steps that they can follow. I've got to create, help create an atmosphere that our kids get the Holy Ghost, that our younger generation can tap into something from God. calling it's a, it's a calling that comes upon us God's will for his message in each era of time to be shared from one generation to the next it's, it's not accidental I always, I always I like to I use it as a like a, a mental picture uh, an example of the blind man sitting on the side of the road to me, he could have said, well, if I'm supposed to be healed, you know, he knows I'm sitting here. I'm, I'm right over here on side the road. If I'm supposed to be healed, he'll get me. Is that what the blind man did? Uh -uh. He said, I have a need, and I heard Jesus is passing by, so I'm going to be intentional. I'm going to cry out. I'm going to cry out until he hears my voice. I like to use that as an example. I'm not just going to take for granted God's going to save my kids. I'm going to cry out for God to save my kids. I'm not just going to take for granted that he knows, well, we're here and, and we, God knows if, if, if there are people. In, no. We're going we're gonna to be intentional and we are going to cry out and reach out for God. That's, that's just how God works. We find from the word of God. That younger generations, I see a lot of children here today, and I see a lot of young people here today, and a lot of young adults, and I'm so thankful for that. To me, one of the signs of a healthy church is it's not just a hundred elders and five and, and, and one young couple. It's a balance all the way through from the generations that lets you know what's happening is what's supposed to be happening. But it's 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 God's process, both in families, but also to those young in the gospel, hear me, to receive much teaching, guidance, and instruction from those who are further along in the journey. It's not, it, it's not just families. Now, as a dad, God puts it on me, and I'm praying over my kids every day and doing what I can. But, but there's also just young in the gospel. Let me give you an example. When, when Jamie, my wife, got in church, she, she had been, she had been a, a, a party girl, a girl of the world, and, and gave herself hard to this world and, and became addicted to drugs and, and crystal meth. It was part of her life before she served the Lord, before she knew, before she knew Jesus, before I knew her. And she, she, she went to a drug rehabilitation. And then she came out and found out that one of her former drug buddies, somebody used the term, did you hear about him? He's on fire for God. And she said, what? Him? Where? And she, she drove, found out where he was working. She said, what happened to you? She said he was glowing. He said, I got the Holy Ghost. I got baptized in Jesus' name. She was at church the next Sunday. Within a week, she was baptized, she was delivered, she was filled with the Holy Ghost. God began to work in her life. That's young in the gospel. She, here, so here you have this long lady. She has great grandparents, great parents, but they didn't serve the Lord in the apostolic faith. So in the apostolic faith, here she is like a child. I love you. I mean, she, they, she said they called her Jumping Jamie. All she knew, just serve Jesus, just give God everything. But there were ladies in that church that took that late, that took that twenty-something young lady under. She called them her praying mamas. They taught her how to pray. They taught her how to serve the Lord. They taught her how to walk with God. I'm not just talking about grandpa, dad, son, grandkids, grandma. That we got to do that. It's both. It's in our family structures, but it's also you see a brand new young person or kid come in the church or a young adult or a couple. There's going to be mama, daddy figures. There's going to be big brother, big sister figures that say, hey, come to prayer meeting with us. Hey, we want to visit with you. And you're sharing the gospel from generation. 
She had praying mamas. She called them her praying mamas. Taught her how to travail. Taught her how to pray in the spirit. Taught her how to get a hold of God. That's God's plan. That's how it works. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Notice what Paul told Timothy. I love the, I love what's implied and, and shared here. Chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. He, Paul said, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Now, notice this next verse. And the things. I want you to notice all the, the transmissions or the shifts here. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. I've shared it with you. You've heard me. He said, I'm asking you, take the same principles. Commit thou to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. In one verse, you've heard and seen what I've lived. I've shared it with you. You're going to share it with faithful men, and they're going to share it with others. The Lord's saying, this is how it works. Amen. This is how it works. This is how it works. What God does for you, he's going to do through you. Some's going to be your word. Some's going to be your example. Amen. But it's meant to happen. Boom, boom. It's meant to come to us and to flow through us. And God gets it from generation to generation. I've taught you. You teach others. And they will teach others. That, that's, that puts a soberness and a healthy weight on my spiritual shoulders to say, Greg, let God do things for you. But be willing to share, be willing to example, be willing to talk, be willing to mentor, be willing to lead, be willing to do that. That doesn't just apply to Pastor Whitaker and myself who minister full-time our calling over a pulpit and obviously through teaching and leading. It doesn't just apply to the precious ministry team that's helping lead this church. I believe this is a calling that comes upon all of us, whether we say I'm in ministry or not, to every parent, to every grandparent, to every guardian, to every teacher, to everyone that's involved in any way. You're not just filling a space in a Sunday school class. You're helping the gospel go from generation to generation generation you're a helping share in the introductory statements in the book of Joel notice what is said in Joel chapter 1 verse 3 just a kind of a random statement in the setting there but notice this Tell your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children. Oh, my goodness, there's generations in one verse. There's generations in four generations covered in one verse. I'm going to move. I'm going to move quickly. But I want us to just see how, how repetitive this is in God's word, his commandments, his statutes and judgments, Deuteronomy 4 verse 9 and 10 only take heed to thyself keep thy soul diligently don't forget what your eyes have seen do not depart uh, from God you know don't let them depart from God but notice what it says teach thy sons and thy sons sons look at the next verse it will go to the very next statement and it says and that they may teach their sons Children, you're getting the point. You get to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Anybody know what's in Deuteronomy chapter 6? Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart, with all of thy soul, and with all of thy might. The next words, it says, these words that I command thee shall be in your heart. Oh, look at verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Talk of them at home. Talk of them when you're walking. Talk about them when you're lying down. Talk about them when you're rising up. Let me just put a little, a little GAV in, in Deuteronomy chapter 6. The GAV, that's the Gregory Allen version. 
I don't, I don't get in trouble changing the word of God, but I just want to put it to us. The only time we talk about God better not be just at church. The only time we hear somebody opening the book better not just be at church. The only time we're covering the principles of the kingdom of God better not just be a few minutes at church. If it's going to be passed down, let it be a part of our life. I remember a moment that impacted my life. I was already called to preach. I was already serving, serving God in, in my local church. And I met a couple dudes in downtown Baton Rouge. I lived in Baton Rouge. This guy had been a rebel. He had been on the LSU football team. He had been kicked off because he got in trouble. I think he slashed somebody in a fight downtown. He was wild. He was built. He was strong. But somewhere he got a conversion. He wasn't the apostolic faith, but this guy and a friend, they got converted. They got called to preach. He wasn't on the football team anymore and one night I was walking around they called it Catfish Town the downtown area of Baton Rouge there was a few restaurant things about years ago and and I noticed one guy's playing a guitar and he's singing and talking there's about 50 uh, college age kids uh, gathered around in a circle and and he's playing and then the other guy's working the edges and he's like seeing the ones that's wanting to and he's like come on look man we're just singing and and I'm like man these guys are passionate and I got to meet them got to know them a little bit we went and ate we went and ate a few times, and I remember it impacted me so much because here I am, Jesus' name, Holy Ghost, one God, but I could go have church, and I could talk about Jesus, but I realized me and my friends at the restaurant, we're talking about who won the ball game last night, and we're talking about this, and we're talking about that, and these guys are bringing their two-inch thick Bible into the, into the restaurant saying, man, let me show you what God told me yesterday. Let me show you what, and I'm like, God used those guys to put something on me saying, I better not just lock Jesus down. Well, we had great prayer. Now let's go talk about the Tigers, and the Saints, and the Astros, and well, Let's let's spend uh, you know ninety percent of our time talking about that deer we're going to get this year or, or that sale. Uh, you got you got me right. Yeah, yeah. Or a, am I saying shopping or a, or, or a deer hunting trip or or uh, it, it, no? I'm not saying they're sin. I'm saying Jesus was a part of their. It was just part of their conversation. And I believe it needs to be in our homes. Huh, I I hope I ain't messing. I hope I'm just being a good evangelist. But young people, if you come in here, hey, yeah, yeah, I love you, Jesus, but you get in your car and you ding on that secular music, the first thing you get in your vehicle, and that's all you hear, and you get home, and you all you watch, and all you read, and, all, and, and you're giving yourself hours of not Jesus, and then you want Jesus to fix everything on 60 minutes of Jesus, that may not be the journey you need to take. That wasn't in the notes. I don't know if I need to go back and find the notes or not or stay here a minute. I'm just telling us. I'm just telling us. Just telling you. Am I saying that you got to go home and be talking in tongues while you're passing out dinner? I mean, I, I mean I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but I'm saying, no, you know, it, it don't have to be, oh, yeah, 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 I would like a little bit of gravy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean... My grandma did that, but I'm not saying we all got to do that. Oh, one of my greatest memories, I had two buddies over spending the weekend with me one time, and my grandma came and spent the weekend with, with my mom, and, and my mom cooked Saturday breakfast, and I still remember one of my buddies, we had the newspaper spread out all over the table. One of them had the comics, one of them had the sports, and, and, and I said, and it just hit me, it just hit me. I said, Momo, Momo, come in here and pray over our breakfast. She never just prayed over breakfast. That neck got to popping, boy, and she started. I don't know what hikamahakamaho means in tongues, but when I get to heaven, I'm going to find out because she could say she'd be talking to hikamahakamaho. I'm like, Momo. My grandpa was Kondi Oshanda. I, st I still remember that. Kondi Oshanda. But my grandma would do that little thing. Oh, hey God. And I got her in there at breakfast to pray. And my friends, oh, they weren't being disrespectful, but they, they got to giggling so hard. I'm not saying. But I'm saying if, if, if I made a spreadsheet 
If I made a spreadsheet and it's 98% stuff, it may not send me to hell by itself, but it's just not Jesus. From the second I leave the door, dun, 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 my ears, my heart, my, my impressions, my, my passions, my energy, and, and then I'm going I'm to give Jesus and pastor 60 minutes to try to fix it. They said, talk of it when you wake up. Talk of it when you go to bed. Talk about it when you're living in your life. Talk about it. I'm not going to finish all those scriptures because it just keeps going on. Just tell them to your children. Tell them to your children. Pass it on. I, I, I do want to go back and look. Can we put that verse again um, that said, let me, let me see exactly which verse it is. Um, uh, Deuteronomy, let's do 11 verse 19. It's just all over. I mean, it's, it's, it's well, it's six, it's, it's chapter six, verse seven. I've given you a bunch of verses. Let's do six, verse seven first. I just want y'all to see this one more time. Amen. Pastor, we might need to give the media person a, a bonus this week, putting up with me. Talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk in the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. Chapter 11, verse 19. Verse 18 said, my words, lay them up in your heart. Teach them to your children. Speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up. Let it be a part of your life. I love this next setting. Joshua chapter 4 verse 20. When God delivered Israel through the leadership of Joshua through the Jordan River. Moses was through the Red Sea and the Jordan River. With Joshua through the Jordan. Verse 21 of chapter 4. Here, here's what God had told Joshua to do. When you're going through the river, this is so beautiful to me. When you're going through the river, he said, take 12 stones, one for each tribe. And he said, I want you to make, oh, that, that's such an interesting study because they made one altar that stayed in the river. And when the waters closed, that wasn't for anybody else to see. That was between them and God. But they made another altar. And they said, put it on the side, build this altar. Why? Why? Did God just want to miraculously deliver them through the Jordan River? He did, but that's not all he wanted to do. So I grin because when I was a, when I was a kid raised in church and a preacher would say, now, I said all that to say this. There were times as a teenager I wanted to stand up and say, well, why didn't you just say this? <laughs> so I'm not going to say that. You, <laughs> you know, That could have saved us 45 minutes there. <laughs> but I'll say it like this. If you've heard anything in the structure of where we have talked, it gets us to here. God is basically saying, Every single thing I do for you, every miracle I show, every blessing I give, I'm doing it for you. But I'm also doing it so that there can be an avenue that my power, kingdom, and message can continue to be conveyed. Notice, make this altar. And when your children ask, a year, or two, or three, or five down the line, Daddy, Mom, what's, what's this pile of stones over here? It looks like it's supposed to be something. Oh, can I tell you? Can I tell you what happened? When I, oh, it was amazing. We didn't, we didn't know what we were going to do. And God spoke to our man of God. And a miracle came and... What, what do these stones mean? Notice what the Bible says. Then you shall let your children know. Israel came over 
on dry ground. The Lord dried the waters of the Jordan before you, and we all passed over, just like God did for the Red Sea, just like he did for them. He did for us. And down the line, when you get in a bind, he's going to do it for you too. you got to know what he did for your grandma and what he's done for me. You serve the same God, and he can do it for you. Amen. I want our kids to know. I want the younger generation to know. I want a new convert to know. God, I'm glad Pastor tells stories like that. Because God did that for his dad that put a principle in this man's life that now here he is years later sharing with you and you're getting the message. If I get in a bind and God says, trust me, give $500 to the mission's cause. You don't know where it's going to come from, but just do it. That's a principle that's being passed down so that the next generation... So that they can know. So that they can know. And then can we put the very next verse up on the screen? Or let me get back so I can tell you. Verse 24. God did it for us. He did it for them at the Red Sea. And I want you to know. He can do it for you. Why? That all the people of the earth may know. The hand of, did God just do the Red Sea and the Jordan River for them? Uh, he said, I did it for you. I did it for your children and the next generation. But it's also that all the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty. May I say this? And what a perfect example. Thank you again for sharing that story. I do wish your dad was here to defend himself a little bit. Thank you. That's a perfect example. Perfect example. Perfect example. You see, I got a scar going down the back of my neck. Every once in a while, my little creed man will say, Daddy, tell me that story again. Why is that scar on your neck? And I'll tell him about breaking my neck in a water skiing accident. I'll tell him about the two surgeries where I thought they thought I should be dead and paralyzed. Amen. But God came in and God helped us. And I'll... Mm. And I'll tell him about the third surgery that was scheduled. But at the last moment, after much prayer and the word of the Lord coming in that hospital room, that neurosurgeon walked in shaking his head saying, I've never seen this before. Your vertebrae pulled apart two surgeries, but something's happened. It's now back in line. I just conferred with two other neurosurgeons. We're canceling your surgery. I've never seen this. And he walks out the room and then he walks back in saying I don't know if you know what just happened I've never seen this before I, I love telling that to my boy I, 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 I love I love sometimes he'll hear me tell a story preaching and then we on the way home he said dad what was that about tell me that one oh the year at general conference we were so broke 13 weeks left in the year. I'm an evangelist. I don't worry about it as much anymore, but I used to count those. Well, there's 13 weeks left. And I'm scheduled to preach one Sunday. Boy, that's, a, that's an in-demand evangelist right there. And the money's almost all gone. And I say, let's go to general conference. We'll just see. Maybe some preachers will invite us to preach. They didn't. And our last night there, before we had to drive home for me to preach and that one weekend I had scheduled was, was missions night. See, I'm going to tell him those stories. I'm going to tell him how the preacher said, here's a pledge card and if God puts any number on your heart, just write it on the pledge card. And so God put a number on my heart and I was like, well, man, I'll put a little extra note. may take six months, but we'll do it. And I said, and Daddy put that card in the bucket. Really? Yeah. And I said, and, and would you believe that one of them preachers had the nerve to get back up there and say, now, if you've already put a number on the card, but God deals with you another number, don't be afraid to make a second card and just make a clear note. And I said, and God put another number four times bigger than the first number on my heart. And I had no clue where it would come from, but I knew it was from the Lord. And it was so real that I looked up at the ceiling and laughed and said, I could kind of figure out the first one, but this one's on you. 
and put it in that bucket and went back home, drove all the way from Nashville to Alexandria and repacked the next day, drove to New Orleans to preach my last weekend of the whole year. And at lunch, the pastor in New Orleans says, hey, man, where are you going to be in the next little while? Well, what does an evangelist tell a pastor when he's not going to be anywhere for about eight weeks? I'm going home. I've been wanting to memorize the book of Leviticus. It's a good book. And before I could, I, I, he said, because God spoke to me last night when you drove into town that I'm supposed to keep you at least for the next five weekends. He, he said, yeah, and I'm going to tell those stories, Brother Whitaker. And, and he didn't stop right there. He said, the Lord told me we're to bless you double this first weekend just to be a blessing. And, and, da, 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 da. and at the end of that five weeks, that missions pledge was completely paid and there was a little bit left over. Come on, I'm going to tell those stories. Absolutely. Passionate. Tell those stories. Uh, and I'm just speaking to the elders and the middle age and the young adults and all the points in between. You got stories. You got stories where you thought you had messed up too bad, but the preacher preached and you went and found an altar and cried and prayed until God mercy washed over you. You got stories. You got, you got, you say, Brother Greg, I don't know how to teach. I don't know how to share. I don't know. You, you just pray, God, let, let, let it flow. And I'm telling you, it can happen. It can happen where we just begin to share the goodness of God and watch it. Watch it pass down. Watch it move. And again, I'm not just talking about families. But I am. But I use my wife as an example. Getting in the church. Only one in her family in the church. But people took her in. And I promise you, she told it to others also. Would you stand with me? Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22. I don't believe this has much to do with money. It may. But I believe it involves a whole lot more when it says, A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. And the wealth of the sinner laid up good man I could talk all day long but I'm going to tell those stories how my grandpa got the Holy Ghost in his own front yard in a revival I'm going to tell the stories of the miracles I'm going to keep doing what we can do to pass it down from generation I feel like there is an absolute beautiful time in God's presence where people will receive things from the Lord, even the miraculous. And Phil, I won't be surprised if a few children get the Holy Ghost in the next few minutes. We're going to do this a little bit different today. And I know when I say this next word, a lot of you are going to be qualifying, am I that or not? But I'm going to ask for the elders to come first. I turned 57 today. I guess I qualify. I don't get much perks yet, but maybe soon. But if you're in the 50s or older, would you mind coming and standing at this altar first? I honor you. I know this may be a little different. I honor you. I honor you. Thank you. You've helped me preach all service long. Thank you for coming. Now, you look like you should still be in your 40s. I don't know what you're doing up here. Come on up. That's it. If you're not comfortable, you don't have to. But it'll just spread out across the front. Because there's anointing today that's about to flow. Just come a little bit closer because others are coming behind you. Just come a little bit closer, kind of spread out, fill up close because we've got to make room for those behind us. Now I'm asking for those. You find yourself in the middle age, whatever that is. What's middle age? I mean, in the 50s and the 40s. You see, I read that text that said, your young men shall dream dreams and your old men shall have visions. I've never had a vision. I'm still dreaming dreams. But if you find yourself in the middle age group, would you just come forward? 
thank you for being faithful. Thank you for serving the Lord. Some of y'all got in church when it wasn't cool. Some of you, I mean, my grandfather, he got the Holy Ghost in a revival in his front yard. Because the preacher knocked on his door and said, I mean, trapper, moonshine runner, scrapper. I asked Grandpa years later, why do why you think that preacher knocked on your front door? He said, he told me, God told him, he said, if you can have revival there, you can have revival anywhere. Go see if he'll let you preach in his front yard. But thank y'all for being faithful. Come on up a little bit closer. Now, there's an anointing that's about to flow. Come a little bit closer in here. here. You'll see why in just a minute. Now, I'm asking for every young adult, every young person, and every child that would like to get a blessing in this house today. Would you come? Y'all stand close because they got to come stand behind you. Ladies, just press a little bit this way and maybe even spread out water. I'd like for Now, here's what I want you to do. As they're coming, I want you all to turn around. You are about to be the ones that pray in this altar service. Every young adult, every child, every young person that would like a blessing, you come and get close to this group. Just come. A young couple, I don't care if you be, you're a young married couple in this church, just come close. Y'all coming up the aisle, just come close. Now, here's what I want us to do first. Elders, I made you, I had you turn just a little tad too quick. Just, just turn towards me just a little bit. Let's all pray together right now. I'm telling you, there's a blessing about to flow. If I was a young person in this room right now, I'd say, God, you're about to do what you prophesied. You're about to help your anointing flow generation to generation. Elders, thank you. Middle age, thank you. Thank you for loving truth. Thank you for walking with Jesus. Thank you for getting back up when you fell down. Thank you for trusting Jesus when you didn't have the answers. Thank you for serving the Lord and being faithful. Thank you for making it through the hard miles. Thank you for living for God. God and given us, amen, given us in the 2000s a church to come to. Thank you, Haka, for your worship. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for your prayers through the years. Thank you for your prayers through the years. God bless every elder, every middle age. There's an anointing on you today. I don't know exactly what all God's got for you, but there's an anointing on you today. There's something from the heavens for you today. There's something from the heavens in this room right now. There's something from the heavens in this room right now. Hallelujah. 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 Now, now here's what I want us to do. Here's what I want us to do. And elders... Those of you middle age, uh, it, you may have to take a few steps. But if I was a young couple in this room, I'd be finding some elders to pray for me right now. If I was young parents in this room, I'd say with several of you, because we're just seeing a principle that God says, here's how I do it from you to you to you to you. I pass it down. I, I did it for the Red Sea. I did it for the Jordan River. I'm going to do it for you. Elders, could y'all just, just, those of you that want to be prayed for, just come close. Elders in middle age, just begin walking. Find ladies, find you a young lady to pray for amen maybe a couple of find you a couple of four pray find you some young adults men find you some young men young men if i wanted a blessing today i'd be saying lay hands on me right now this is how jesus works this is how his kingdom rolls uh, I, if i was even a middle-aged man or couple that needed something from god i'd find me an elder and say amen you represent how jesus moves you represent how god works I'm praying if there's anybody still in this house that wants to come to this altar people are going to get the Holy Ghost right now people are going to get strength from the throne room right now people are going to get something from the heavens right now amen if I would that's it if I was a child right now I would cry out to God if I was a young person in this church I would cry out to God God let it flow what you did for them at the Red Sea do it for us what you did for them at the Jordan River do it for us God let there be a generational blessing I believe some generational blessings are about to be poured out right now I believe some generational blessings are about to be poured out right now God gave your grandpa an anointing on how to navigate God gave your daddy an anointing God can give you an anointing to carry through in 2022 
God will give you strength on how to raise your kids. God will give you strength on how to walk with Jesus. Amen. Elders, that's it. You may have to walk a little bit. There's a few down this aisle. Make sure that you just keep walking, elders, in middle age. Make sure you find every young man, every child. Make sure every one of them gets somebody to pray for them. Elders, don't be afraid to walk a little bit. Somebody pray for that young man right there. He's crying out to God. Crying out to God. Let a blessing come. Let your hand be the one. It's not just the preacher today. Elders, thank you. Generations, thank you. That's it. That's it. It ain't just for my papa. It's not just for my daddy. It's not just for my mama and my mom. God's going to give me the strength to navigate. God's going to give you the strength to navigate. If I was a young couple, I'd line up right now. Lay hands on me. If I had small kids, I'd line them up right now. Pray for me. Some of you are single parents in the journey. I pray anointing to you right now. Some of you may even be the guardian of your grandkids. I pray an anointing to you right now. There's power in this room right now. Elders, don't be afraid to walk. Amen. Don't be afraid to move. That's it. Lay hands on somebody. If God leads you, just move a little bit. Hallelujah. I need a couple of elders to look at me real quick. A couple of elders. I want this couple to be prayed for with all these precious kids. I need a few of you to make your way. They're standing in that aisle praying. I want to make sure they have hands on their shoulders. Amen. Amen. There you go. There, that's it. They're precious. That's precious. I just pray strength to that mom today. I pray strength to that dad today. Let them feel hands on their shoulders. Let their hands, let your hands be on their shoulders. Let an unction from the Holy Ghost come right now. God, let any renewings that need to happen, let it happen. Let any infillings that need to happen, let it happen. <laughs> if there's any kids that need the Holy Ghost, let it come on them right now, Jesus. You're not alone. You've got generations standing with you. you got generations standing with you.
can't think of a more timely sermon that could have been preached today. Thank you, Brother G.A.V. for the reminder. Seems like we pass down the things we shouldn't pass down and neglect what we need to pass down. He, he, he hammered on it, but in that same setting of hero Israel, it was over and over again. Pass it down. But what are we talking about? That we're instilling. I hope we're passing the right things down. Thank you, Brother Albrecht. You did. This is. You, you didn't know we already had something in the works. Um, I grew up going to the campgrounds, and I'm very grateful for that. My parents got to do a lot up there, and I made a lot of friends. But one of the greatest friends I made, and I call him friend, is my Uncle Greg, and uh, I have very fond memories of him. He has been steady. He is strong. He's constant through life's hardest times. Um, we thought we were going to lose him a couple years ago when he got in that wreck, and um, we didn't thank God. He's anointed. He's powerful. He's gifted. He has a burden, not just for ministry. He has a burden for kids still, very much still shows, and um I'm thankful for the handprints of Greg Albritton on my life. And we love you. We thank God for you. And your ministry has blossomed. And I'm so thankful that you were here today. Happy birthday. Say something that I meant to say earlier. But at camp meeting, before I've ministered, I, I, I touched on a few things, but bef at camp meeting one night this year, talking to minister friends or whatever, and I looked up, and and there was Sweet Destiny. She had waited patiently till I got through yakking with, with my friends. And I'm telling y'all, if everybody was excited to see me as, as she was, oh, my goodness, it made my whole night. And she said, Brother Greg, I just couldn't leave without coming and saying, hey, I want to tell you, hey, and I love you. And so thank you. You made my whole camp meeting. Appreciate it. God bless you. Love on one another. We'll see you Tuesday night. In Jesus' name.